This egg hides something that can't be seen in daylight. For its sake, a whole race of snakes gave up venomous fangs and killing animals. Lose the most formidable weapon on Earth so easily? Well, there's more than just a desire for a snack behind it. Let's go! Nothing in nature just happens. Not even this. It's thought to be a way for pelicans to clear their throats, cool themselves, or just yawn. People still haven't figured out why they turn themselves inside out. It's a little easier with snakes, though. Okay, you could say they do something similar. Dasipeltis are a unique genus that can't be confused with any other, because the diet of these snakes consists only of eggs. And this is one brilliant example of adaptation. Eggs don't fight back. They don't run away. You don't have to wait for them somewhere in the bushes and strike really fast. Snake in our chicken coop. Fat neck now. Many predators love to eat eggs, but only Dasipeltis have made them a staple of their diet and even rebuilt their bodies. Imagine this. People like hamburgers so much that we enlarge the width of our mouths specifically for the sake of it. Does that sound absurd? But Dasipeltis have done exactly that. They almost completely got rid of their teeth so they wouldn't cling to their prey, learn to spread their skull bones, and open their mouth very, no really, very wide. But it's not enough to swallow an egg. You have to get to its contents. And snakes use their spines to do that. What? Special bony protrusions open the shell, then the snake squeezes out every last drop of the contents and spits out the inedible remains. I wouldn't. It's unlikely that the switch to an egg diet was caused by a simple love of eggs. For many carnivores, changing their diet is a way to survive. Look at pandas, for example. They too were once predators and still have incredible biting power. But pandas have found a way to switch to eating bamboo, a common plant in nature whose crops have little dependence on the season. Plus, unlike the food of most other predators, bamboo doesn't try to escape. Well, you got the idea. And there are millions of such examples. If you don't adapt to the new world, you're doomed to disappear. And it doesn't just work with living organisms. Whole rivers change over time. Like, for example, the Ucayali, a right tributary stream of the Amazon. It's enough to look at satellite images to see this. The inhabitants of the Ucayali are probably used to the fact that their house shifts a few feet from one side to the other from time to time. But there's one thing that the animals haven't been able to adapt to even in millions of years. On August 21st, 2017, a total solar eclipse was observed across the United States. It was a unique event watched by many people. Wow. Magic. But while they marveled at the disappearing sun, the animal world just went crazy. Many living creatures have well-defined behavior patterns associated with cycles of light and darkness, as well as temperature. Therefore, they perceive a sudden lack of light and cooling as a sign of a close night. Dr. Lasana Lahner says the solar eclipse won't last long enough to cause chaos, but it could cause some changes. And now imagine how surprised you'd be if your day abruptly turned into late evening and then became day again. But one has the ability to look on a social media to find out what happened. Instead of Facebook or Twitter, frightened birds birds are scurrying around in huge flocks mistaking day for night. Wild animals get lost and come out to people. Pets rush to bed. Bats, on the other hand, wake up. Some species of spiders unravel their webs. Monkeys point their fingers to the sky and shout. Giraffes and horses run in circles. Even the flowers rush to close. And when the sun returns to the sky, things gradually return to normal. But you don't have to be a star 92.8 million miles away to influence animal behavior. Scientists have discovered that deep in the mouse brain, there's a very small area, including about a few thousand cells, that turns appetite on and off. That is, direct impact to it doesn't cause anxiety or fear. The mouse simply stops being interested in food. It is believed that this discovery could lead to a better understanding and treatment of eating disorders. And while we're on the subject of appetite, let's go back to the snake at the beginning of the video. It's scared, so it's going to... Give up the oh, egg. Oh, it didn't even break the egg. We can still eat it. Wasn't it easier for it to expand its menu and be able to choose? A highly specialized animal diet is called stenophagy. And when it comes to one product, it turns into a monophagy. Perhaps once Dasipeltis lacked food, other species simply squeezed them out of a niche and they had to go to extremes. The main advantage of stenophagy is the ability to squeeze everything out of the food you eat. But if that food suddenly disappears, you disappear after it. Not very convenient. 
The opposite nature of eating is omnivorous, but even here there are some exceptions. Thus dogs, primates, and some birds are considered omnivores, but they don't eat wood, for example. By the way, why? It's believed that the number of calories in 2.2 pounds of wood is 10 times greater than the same amount of fruit or leaves. Except that apparently only termites and beavers have solved this mystery. They're able to digest the lignin, the substance that makes wood so hard. At the same time, beavers and termites have grown the right jaws to split wood on a macroscopic level. But even if you cut a piece of wood into tiny pieces, the human body still can't handle them. At best, the wood will come out in exact same form it went into the human. And since everything in nature makes some kind of sense, the hardness of wood is no coincidence either. It's an evolutionary mechanism that keeps everyone from eating trees. It originally targeted certain bacteria, but they adapted to the change. We're about 300 million years behind. At the same time, there's no way some plants can stop evolving. Rough horsetail, which grows in Eurasia and North America, is so tough that its stems can scratch a glass or metal surface. And now you can see that the penny is a lot cleaner. If cattle swallow horsetail, it can cause internal bleeding. So if you ever suddenly decide to go on a woody diet, you definitely shouldn't start with horsetail. Alternative food sources are basically pretty dangerous stuff. Check out this video, watch it, and do not, under any circumstances, repeat anything like that. He eats ordinary sharp razor blades for the first course. A fact, mind you, that they are taken with a pinch of salt. Arthur Haylock is a unique man who, in the 30s of the last century, allegedly ate things that wouldn't even fit as food for a beaver. Razors, light bulbs, milk bottles, hats, and who knows what else. I couldn't find enough information about Arthur, but a newspaper article says that his appetite was confirmed by x-rays. It seems impossible to digest all of this. However, gastric juice is a much more powerful thing than we used to think. It consists mostly of hydrochloric acid, and it's capable of dissolving pennies. Wait, but if our bodies are powerful enough to handle such items, why can't we use them as food? Besides them being tasteless and dangerous, the human body needs to get a certain daily dose of calories as well as vitamins, micronutrients, and other things received with food. With different kinds of food, different substances get into the body, sometimes vital, sometimes not so much. Today, humans are unable to survive without most of these substances, and although we're not talking about instant death, the consequences will be unpleasant. Also, some things simply should not go into the human body. Sometimes our bodies can't even handle what other animals eat. This is a rat burger. Not bad. For example, vultures and other scavengers. A person who eats spoiled meat risks getting a whole bunch of diseases from ulcers to botulism, gangrene and tetanus, along with the bacteria. However, vultures don't suffer from such consequences. Presumably, the chemical environment of their stomach is destructive to dangerous bacteria, but so far these birds remain poorly studied. In any case, if you suddenly feel like eating something inedible, you better not. Humans are rather fragile creatures and many things can harm them. There are exceptions though. James Bartley was a whaler who, according to late 19th century legend, was swallowed by a sperm whale. It's possible physically because sperm whales sometimes swallow even giant squids, except those squids don't survive afterwards. According to one version, Bartley was inside for 36 hours. His skin was discolored by gastric juice and he went blind for the rest of his life. According to another version, however, Bartley returned to work three weeks later and felt fine. Well, you know, the urban legends. Once inside the stomach of a sperm whale, Bartley would have drowned, suffocated, or been crushed by the muscle walls. But that doesn't mean that someone's eaten prey can't get out alive. When a frog grabs a Regimbarchia attenuate beetle, it makes its own way from the stomach to the intestines and safely climbs out of the amphibian through the anus. This is not the only example. Some snails can survive the journey through the body of a fish and birds by hiding in their shells. It's also known that fish eggs can survive in the stomachs of birds. But the beetle was the first to consciously and actively flee from a predator by being inside that predator. I wouldn't be surprised if, in the future, scientists will use these beetles to study animals from the inside. They'd attach cameras to them and launch them, for example, into a poorly studied vulture, so they could figure out what allows it to survive by eating rotten meat. Because in such meat, there may be bacteria that are resistant even to radiation. Maybe there's a little black hole inside each vulture. I don't know how to explain it.
The Nakakas Radio Durans, found in canned mead, have been in outer space for years. They resisted galactic, cosmic, and solar radiation, temperature fluctuations, drying, freezing, vacuum, and microgravity conditions, and not just survived, they created new mechanisms to resist stress and repair damage. In fact, bacteria are exactly where it all started. Who would have thought back then, 4.3 billion years ago, that something like that would evolve into humans? Well, strictly speaking, there was no one yet to think, but even back then, our distant ancestors had the ability to adapt. And it's still with us. Evolution doesn't stop, which means that the people of the future may become different. Taller, smarter, or venomous. I'm serious. Our genes already contain everything we need today to start spitting venom. All that's left is to evolve. See you later.